I see Miss Hardy can get in. Okay, Miss Hardy, you're in. Let's see if everybody, oh, there we go. People are starting to come in now. Share my screen. Good, good. Now we're getting y'all in. Yeah, that was Katina. Okay, we got Tina in. All right. I'm so sorry. Technical difficulties. Tell you the truth. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we prayed already. No, I'm just thinking. <laughs> You gotta kind of lighten up the mood because it's like, you see, you getting me? Uh, but we did pray, but I mean, we will do it again, okay? Sister Mary, would you mind leading us in prayer the second time? Okay, okay. Lord, we thank you for this day, this wonderful, beautiful Monday, a time uh, to learn more about you, your grace and your mercy. Thank you for our leader and Mary, Thank you that you give her what we need, what we all need to grow closer to you. And uh, we ask that uh, this be um, a wonderful time to learn more. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Hopefully we'll get it. Sorry, I'm thirsty. So um, next week, by the grace of God, we're going to go back to this regular programming with which is the meeting id that you normally have for some reason i don't know i'm not a technology person a techie person so move on let's see you can't hear oh goodness anybody else can't hear <laughs> this is just y'all can't hear me no, I can hear you. Okay, Mariana, check I your phone. Thank you, Miss Hardy. Okay. All right, tonight we're going to talk about the potter's field. Will, let me tell you how this came about. Uh, Sister Spence was talking to me last week and she was telling me about they had went to the potter's wheel in Baton Rouge. And she was saying how, what a, an experience she had. I was like, mm, okay. And immediately my mind started going. I was like, ooh, okay. But then it kind of just went away. And I always believe that the Lord has to tell me something more than once. Now, other people, you may tell them once and they okay. But this girl here, she needs constant. So uh, Saturday, Saturday, I went in and then uh, I asked the teen. I said, hey, come meet me with all that. She said, well, you come meet me after. So I did, and we sat down and we watched Hosea from the Bible. And she didn't know this, but it was all God ordained. Because while we were watching that film, on one part, Jose is a potter. And he's sitting at the wheel and he's with the lump of clay and he gets upset because of something else going on in his life. And you could see because the, the, the clay just start going all over. And I was like, okay, Lord, I see you now. So while I was driving, words just started coming. Just, But me, I have to write for me to remember. Them. And I said, well, Lord, if this is what you want me to speak about on Monday, when I get home to that computer, you going to give it right to me. Well, he gave it right to me. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the potter's wheel. And you would be surprised how much grace is in the potter's wheel. So surprised. So the question, um, I want us to keep in our mind throughout this night. How does the master shape us? How does Jesus shape us? And hopefully by the end of this lesson, you will have an answer to that question. But I want it to always be, and let me be honest, this may be a message that's just for me. Because boy, was he, 
beating up on me in this message. So it could be just for me, but it's for you to praise God. Okay. Uh, the verse that I want to use tonight is Isaiah 64 and eight. We are the clay and you, meaning Jesus, are the potter. We all are formed by your hand. So we start, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So let me let this person in and then we'll get started some more. Okay, so we are the clay and you are the potter. We are all formed in by your hand. Thank you, Jesus. So we start off just a lump of clay. No value at all. It's just, look at that. It looks horrible. However, God uses circumstances, people, and difficulties to prepare us to be ready to yield to his loving hands. So we may look like, this is, this is ugly to me. When I pulled it, I was like, gosh, but that's the clay isn't pretty. It's not until it gets in the master's hand that it becomes something great. Now, we're all begin this process the same, all as a lump of clay. However, at different times and different circumstances, does he use it to mold us? Our circumstances and the time will never be the same because we are not the same. I'm getting excited because I'm starting to feel what I'm going to say. The master's hands. Oh, my God. So we know that according to science, and I did Google, I did some research to make sure I was coming with some knowledge behind it. Clay is hard, okay? <laughs> One thing about clay, well, let me get my message first. The potter needs the water to make the clay usable and workable. Just sitting the clay on the wheel and trying to do something with it will not produce anything because it will not conform to anything because it's hard. It needs water. For the sake of teaching this lesson, we're gonna say the water is the Holy Spirit. We need Jesus living on the inside of us for us to become workable and usable. According to Acts 2 and 38, and 39, when he says, uh, repent, that means telling God you're sorry, being baptized in Jesus' name, going down in only his name. And he said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's his gift to you. That Holy Spirit is the water that he will use to start molding you. I love that part. I was like, thank you, Jesus. We need the spirit so Jesus can mold us and shape us and make us into what he refers to as a valuable vessel. Without the water, we just a lump of clay. We're good for nothing. Just to sit down in the storage room waiting for whenever. Now, one thing I learned while I was watching the movie Hosea and watching a video of them doing the master's hand of the potter's wheel, I noticed that the clay, and even Sister Spence told me that, it has to stay in the center. And she said when she was doing it, they kept telling her, keep her in the center, keep her in the center, because if not, it'll start swirling and splash off. She said hers went flying. Well, it's the same way with our lives. If we don't keep, let the Lord keep us in the center, he is the center of our lives, then what's going to happen? The things of this world is just going to start making us turn and making us flip. And before long, we all splattered in every direction. And one thing I saw when watching these videos, it's not easy to keep that clay in the center. It's hard work. So sometimes when you feel like you're being pushed and pushed is because he's putting you in the center. 
because there's purpose for you in the center. And I, I think about that song, Jesus be the center of our lives. Well, he wants us to be the center of his life as well. So let's let, let us let him keep pushing us into the center where he can do his best work in our lives. Am I making sense? Okay. Oh, but <laughs> yes, we have the part where he's pushing us to the center. And then he's molding us in there. And in the videos, they could see where the master's hand is constantly on that clay. It never moves away. It's always either digging in and pushing out or moving around, just steadily molding it. It's a process, just like we are a process. And once the master have it to where he likes it, it goes sit out to dry for a moment. And then only the best, the most valuable pieces that he created goes into that fire. Well, then that just took a whole nother level for me because I was like, oh, the fire. Gold tried in the fire. Okay, Lord. Then I also thought about what well, the fire can represent our trials, our tribulation. I found this part on the internet and I thought it was like, wow. Ancient potters baked their product in a kiln, which is a special furnace that might easily read 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Notice this part. This is still from Googling. A powder does not cast worthless stones into his furnace. So the fact, oh my God, thank you, Lord. I felt that one. The fact that you are going through the trials and tribulations let you know that you are worthy, that you have value. Again, you are God's ladies of worth. Because if you were nothing, you wouldn't go through things because he only put his best through the fire. It says, I'm going to tell you another part that it says, I wrote it down. But before that, through our fiery trials, we become more valuable. Only the finest and the most expensive type of pottery goes through that intense fire of 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. He makes other jars, other vases, and it's more of like the cheap versions. They don't go through the 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. They go through the fire, but not the 2,700. So if you feel like, oh my God, I'm hitting it on every side, front, back, left, right, up, down, everywhere. Could it be that the Lord says, it's because I find you valuable. I know you're expensive to me. You're worth to me. Oh my God, I don't know if that makes you feel, but it made, it made me like, oh my God. Okay, Lord. Well, I'm not going to complain so much when it's all around me because I've been complaining lately. Like, can I get a break? But now I don't want a break. If it's, if it's because in God's eyes that I'm valuable and that he says I'm worth it and I'm like gold tried in the fire, well, come on, trials. Go ahead and make me. Make me. That's what you're doing. Because he, if I wasn't worth it or if you wasn't worth it, then guess what? You wouldn't be going through it. Girl, your Jesus think a lot about you. So look at on the potter's wheel. <laughs> no, I picked this man because he had a smile on his face. And I'm pretty, I could just imagine our Jesus when he's making us and molding us. And he's like, that's my daughter. That's my queen. That's my princess. I say she's worth it. I don't care what man says. I say it. So if I said, then that's all that matters, right? And look at his hands. It's very involved in 
the, the clay that no longer looks like just a lump of clay no more, right? Because where you started, it's not where you're going to end up. You won't end up like a piece of clay. No, you're going to become beautiful and expensive where many people want that, that vase or jar or whatever. So at his will, through his spirit, the master potter can shape you. So I started thinking, <laughs> there's also a flip side of this that I read too. And it's also in the Bible in Jeremiah. Uh, she still can't get in. I did let you in. Okay. Um, where the Lord told Jeremiah to go to the potter's house. And when Jeremiah went, he saw the man at the potter's wheel and the clay wasn't being molded, couldn't make it. And so he just threw it out. There is a scripture in the Bible that says thrown with the rejects in the potter's field. When the Lord, when we will not allow the Lord to shape us, we become a reject. And it's not like a reject for what the world calls it. So by the grace of God, we are not going to be rejects and thrown in the potter's field. We're going to let the Lord continue to shape us and mold us. So I look at it like this. Let me see if I can pull it up because I had notes and everything. The fire makes you usable. The fire conceals what is good in you. Because when it's gone through the fire, all of those particles that were loose, they come together. So what's good in you comes together. I love that part. You are no longer the broken and rejected. Oh, I wanted to compare it with this. Years ago, I've heard about this, and you probably heard this too. Uh, the old violin that was all broken, tattered, and torn, all out of tune. And the auctioneer went up to say, uh, anybody got 10, five, one, nobody wanted it. It was useless until the master came and picked it up. He tuned it up, tightened the strings, and then he started playing beautiful melody on it. Once he started playing that beautiful melody, when the auctioneer went to give his price, he started it up at a higher value. It wasn't $10 anymore. 10,000, oh, I got 10, 20. It went up because of the touch of the master's hand. So at times we may feel like the rejects because of the way society have treated us or the way, and I'm gonna be frank. Y'all know I'll be frank. The way man have treated us. And when I'm talking about man, I'm talking about man, not mankind, because we're women. Because sometimes men are so ugly where they just, you just another notch on their belt to most men. That's those whoremongers. So to them, we may be a reject. Oh, I don't have to move on. And we're in that field. But then God comes along. And he takes what man may have said was of no value and no use. And then he says, oh, wait a minute. Let me tune her up. Let me clean her up. Let me wash her brand new. And then now it's like, oh, because you've been touched with the master's hand. Oh my God, he's so good, y'all. So I started thinking, and these are the words that were coming to my mind while I was driving, thinking about in the fire, your loneliness. Maybe through that fire of loneliness is so you can spend some alone time with him. We're gonna change the negative into a positive. Maybe your sickness that you're going through, amen, is maybe because he wants to impart the gift of healing. Maybe your rejection, we've been rejected before, I know I have, is because he wants you to show love because you know how it feels to be rejected. So you're going to be able to love without a condition. Maybe your brokenness. It's just so that you can help another broken person. So my next question is, who 
or what have pushed you in the fire to where you wanted to give up? Think about that person or that thing and you put it in your mind to say, thank you. Thank you. I got to make a phone call this afternoon and say, thank you. Because of you, now God sees I'm valuable. Because like Brother Jeremy said, that old stinking river, but it also became the river to save. So that old stinking fire pit also became the fire that made you more valuable. That made the, the best in you come out. So go ahead and tell whomever or whatever, thank you. Because now you made me realize I am valuable. So when you look at this, the next picture. Oops. <laughs> when you come out, you become a beautiful, beautiful, valuable, expensive. And what I love about the powder swill, the, the vase or the picture that he makes, it's always open. It's an open top. And I started thinking, why is it open? Because I want you to fill someone else's cup. Because you're valuable and you went through the fire, you're gonna be able to pour into someone else and let them know, oh, God sees your worth. I've been there, I've been there. You're going through it now, but oh, how beautiful you will be when you come out of this. He never made us a beautiful vase or a beautiful jar, whatever, you're, whatever you wanna picture yourself as, just to be on somebody's shelf. We are not trophy wives. Freely has given, now he wants us to freely give. We no longer have to live our life in misery, in loneliness, in rejection, in brokenness, with suicidal thoughts. I've been there. When I'm talking to you guys, I'm talking from my own personal experience. Now I can look at myself in the mirror regardless of what man tells me and say, I'm valuable. I may not be to you. And you know what? It's okay. Because in God's eyes, I'm somebody. And let me tell you, it took me the longest to finally admit that I am somebody in God's eyes. And it doesn't matter what man says, my husband say, nobody say. Nobody, because they can't save me anyway. They can't save you anyway. The only one that can save you is the one that says you're valuable. So my question to myself was, am I gonna listen to what the man say that has nothing to do with my life after this? Or am I gonna listen to the one who died for me and saved me and put me in the fire and tells me I'm beautiful and tells me I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, I like that sound. That sounds better to me. So I'm going to pay attention to what God says about me and not man. So ladies, um, I'm doing good with time. Uh, I just want to remind you, if God is allowing you to be in the fire, that's a purpose for your life. That's a plan for your life. And chances are it's bigger than you. And one thing Sister or Dr. Jennifer Williams say all the time, and I, I'm starting to let it be my motto, the devil only fights what he fears. So if he's fighting you, it's because he fears you. If he's not fighting you, chances are he's like, I'm not worried about her. She okay, you know? But if he's fighting you and you know, gosh, man, it's because he fears you. You have more power in your little pinky to come at the devil and have him run it than, you do, than he does just talking the trash in your ears. 
You have the power to, when he come in, like my sister say, not today, little devil. You have the power to tell him that. Not today, little devil, and get out. We're not friends. I don't have to listen to you. Matter of fact, I don't like you. And you know what? He doesn't like you neither. He hates you. So guess what? The feeling is mutual. I don't like you. You don't like me. Get out my face. So it's through and to bring this all back to full circle of grace is because his grace and his mercy, when we're the lump of clay and we want to stretch out and get away from the master's hand, because if you look at that picture, his hand was like tight around it. But sometimes our flesh, you know, we're human. We want to do it our way. And then we start moving and the potter he has to come push you back in the center. Count that all joy that God, you love me enough that even when I want to be me and he said, come on back, come back to the center. Let me keep molding you. Let me keep working that vessel because he knows how I say this all the time. He knows our end from our beginning. He knows your future. He knows who you are already. And God says, girl, you only see who you going to be. Then you would say, well, let me just go through this. And I want to see what the end's going to be like. So keep walking in your purpose, in your plan. And know that you are of great worth. Great worth. You are valuable. Because notice he said, he doesn't put anything cheap in the fire. You're not cheap. <laughs> She's shouting in there. <laughs> You're not cheap. And I love what Dr. Williams says. You are a designer's original. There is not another you. So you be the best you. When somebody come up and say, you know how the Mona Lisa, they can try. It's the Mona Lisa. Well, guess what? It's the Mary physician. It's the Elizabeth physician, excuse me. It's the Mary Monroe. It's the Katina Sashri. It's the Marcia Hardy. It's the Rosanta Hopkins. It's the Mariana West Frank. Nobody can be you. You be the best you. Because when God made you, he didn't, he didn't make a mistake. And there's no duplicate of you. No matter how much they try, they can't touch you. Now, the be corner for a minute. How MC Hammer said it, can't touch this. You, you can't touch this. I'm a designer's original, baby. I'm expensive. And you, like I told y'all last time, I'm feeling myself right now. Go ahead and add tax to, you know how they say, you go get that uh, Rolls Royce and it's like, oh, you got to have money. Will you be the Rolls Royce or the Bentley or whatever? And you just add tax to you because you're worth more than that. You're worth more than that. And don't settle for anything less than what you're worth. You know, you are worth the world. So don't settle for nothing else. Let me see what she's saying. And me, I said you, girl. <laughs> Mariana West Frank, I said you. <laughs> she want to make sure her name in that. Okay, so um, we had fun tonight. I, I hope that I encourage you to know that you are worth this world. You are worth so much that Jesus died for you. When the last time a man died for you? I know my, none ain't died for me. None. They barely want to live with me, much less die for me. They, they run away. Yes. So you worth so much, Jesus, I'm going to die for that girl because I love her. What? You love me like that? Oh, my gosh. Well, I need to love you like that. Really? Y'all, he, I mean, God look at us like we just something else. You know, he looks at us more valuable than we look at ourselves. Because as women, we look in the mirror and we go straight to comparing. Oh, I'm not like that model here. I don't have the pretty hair, the fine hair, or the pretty teeth, or the pretty eyes, or the pretty nose, or the pretty shape, or the this or the that. 
We always want to say, oh, oh my gosh, she, I need it. No, you are beautiful the way you are. That's who you are. You're the best you that you can be. Nobody can duplicate that. I just, okay, Mary, I'm beautiful, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so I hope that, like I said, I have encouraged you to know your worth and to know, stay in the potter's hand. It may be hot, but it's because he's producing something great in you. Greatness requires dedication, hard work, fervency, tenacity, perseverance, that all of that, it doesn't come easy. But I've heard people say, nothing good comes easy. So you know that you are worth it and know that grace will always be available to you every single day, every single day day. This was our last session on grace. Next week, we'll be going into faith. Faith, because grace saved us. Faith is hopefully keeping us. <laughs> Any questions or comments tonight? You can put them in the check box. I know y'all be shy. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, Sister Mary, I love the confidence if I wouldn't be laying down, I would have ran over this apartment. I would have ran out. I wanted to run over that. <laughs> Girl, that was good, God. Keep up the good work. Keep letting God do with you, sis. That was awesome, sis. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Y'all other people shy, huh? I mean, no. I no. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was, that was <laughs> definitely some motivation. And awesome. I enjoyed it. Like, good, very good. much enjoyed it. As always, but you know. I don't know. Tonight it was a little something. No, I felt something there. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Miss Marcia, Marcia, were you coming on? I don't know if you were or not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. As great as usual. Touch me uh, so much. You awesome. just don't know. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Miss Moore. Anytime. All right. Daughter, were you speaking? I, she act like she's shy. No, she's not talking. Okay. Well, all right. Love you, ladies, and see you back next week. Have a good night. Oh, wait. She put something in the chat. What she put? No. <laughs> all right. Good night, ladies. That little girl there. <laughs> oh, yeah.